the Faculty Center for Teaching and Learning, a la carte. Good morning, I'm Chuck Garcia from the School of Business. So I was asked to deliver a talk to the adjunct faculty on whatever topic I thought was something that would appeal to them and that would add value to their teaching methods. Welcome to the physicality of audience engagement. So I put this together on the hope that I could inspire them, persuade them to think differently about their teaching methods, and then from there, give them a takeaway that hopefully if I could change, alter, or add and augment that the way that they teach, then I've done my job. I watched a movie a couple of months ago that was a documentary that posed a very important question. Tossin, what was that question? Is college worth the cost? Because if you take a look at the cost of education versus the inflation indicators, take a look at this chart. College has increased 1,100%. Does anything about this chart strike you as odd? Why? <laughs> yeah, why? It's like, oh my god, look at this. How is the cost of the college education so far exceeded the inflation indicators? This, then, is a picture in a representation of that movie, and it went on to pose another question. Tiffany, what was that question? What is college for? What is it for? It poses the very question. If, in fact, the, the inflation is 1,100% more than the other indicators, this puts into question the entire purpose of an education. And something else came to mind. Andrew, what was that? Perhaps we are asking the wrong question. So if we ask, what is college for? Is it worth the cost? I say we're asking the wrong question. I'd like to introduce you to my son, Garrett. He turned 21 two days ago. He was Samantha, what did he ask me? Why are professors so boring? Why are professors so boring? He said three out of Five, my five professors are, Taylor? Lecture. They do lectures. And I said, Garrett, does he know your name? Does any of those, do these three professors know your name? And he said, I'll tell you what, if they did ask me my name, here's what I would answer. Hello, my name is Disengage. What we know, and what I taught you guys, is the primacy effect in a speech. You have 15 seconds to engage. What, Taylor, is the consequence if your audience member disengages? basically talking in their knowledge. They're not coming back. And I ask them, how does it make you feel? Samantha, you know what his answer was? Insignificant. He felt insignificant. I'd like to introduce you to Harvard University. Anybody hear of it? When was it founded, Andrew? 1636. It was America's first college. And Tiffany, what was their mission? To train. To train. Their mission was to train clergy. What were their methods? Modeled professionals' behavior. Sure. They modeled the behaviors of what they expected you to be when you became your profession. I tried to the extent that I can to model the behaviors that we have in class very consistent with the behaviors that you can expect when you become an accountant. In the field, you get into the boardroom, whatever that is. So think about how they did this, though. Uh, they put them all up on a pedestal. put them up on a pedestal. <laughs> so now, what are we doing? I'm looking down on you. How does that make you feel? Insignificant, exactly. Now, and here, now what else does he have? He has a barrier. See that barrier? So what does he just become? A talking head. Because he's lost the very notion of the physicality that he might be able to bring in. Impossible. He is completely constricted. For the entire sermon, he has stood there like a statue. You guys have the luxury. You could have just watched it on YouTube. You didn't have to go into church. Could he have done this, Andrew? He just looked you right in the eye. Could he have given you a pat on the back? Could he shake in your hand and give you a warm embrace? If we're talking about God, let's have a group hug. Did he do it? No. These are the conventions by which from 1636 to 2015, we are clinging to these conventions. Do you think the world changed any between 1636 and 2015? Nah, not at all. It's the same world. It's just like it was. So why should we change anything? We might look radical. People might say, this guy's nuts. We like nuts. <laughs> Do we? Yes. Andrew, take this away. <laughs> Lectures are? Lectures are ineffective. They're boring. They're boring. Samantha, why are they boring? They are conventional. People think they work. 80% of the world locks into the conventions. Is that us? No. no. We are not conventional. Because what happens when you're conventional? You go unnoticed happens often when you go unnoticed. How does that make you feel? Significant. See where I'm going with this, guys? We live in the information age. You have more information at your fingertips than ever before. 
do you think that this requires an adjustment of teaching methods? Yeah. Or should we just teach like we did in 1636? <laughs> let's just keep the lectures, let's just keep the sermons, right? No. You can listen to me for three hours and not move. What we're, thinking you, what we're teaching you to do, be critical thinkers. Look, critical thinking is great, but... But, and there's a but, but is a mood breaker. I don't like that word, but I put it in very tactically. <laughs> critical thinking is thinking about your thinking while you're thinking in order to make your thinking better. It's good to be a thinker, is it not? <laughs> yeah, we love thinking. World, there's three kinds of people in the world, guys. There's thinkers... Feelers, and then there's doers. doers. <laughs> the world values doers. Mm. Where's it going with this? This was what I had to think about. This was my path, guys. When I decided to join academia full time, I had two choices. One path, conventional. Then I had to take another approach. The other approach is my career was staked on my ability to be different. So I had a personal challenge. Taylor, what was my challenge? Getting our students to listen and getting them to care. Why should you care about my subject matter? It's my job to help you to understand and appreciate the subject matter, but more important, for it to care, to care about you, to reach each of you as an individual. If I gave you a sermon from on high and I never told you about why it's important, why you need to know it, why it would benefit you and why it would add value to your life, why would I do it? I needed to think about what does an 18-year-old in this day and age think, feel, care about it? What are the methods by which I'm going to ask you to consider why it's important? What kind of professor do I aspire to be? So what I had to think about is the communication goals. What is it I'm communicating? I had to integrate that with the needs of the audience. And most importantly, what value could I add integrating my ability to communicate with your need to learn what you're going to learn because you're paying a lot of money to extract value from this. Let's go through what makes great communicators. Heightened sense of situational awareness. They understood what was going on in the room. Number two, Tiffany. Great listening. Does something strike you as odd? We have two ears and one mouth. We can close our mouth. What can we not close? Partners. Why do you think that is? We meant to listen more than we talk. Absolutely, it's rooted in biology, and yet we don't listen to that, Taylor, do we? No. Now, let's just keep talking. Number three, Kristen. Skilled at reading a person or group by sensing the mood, dynamic, attitudes, and concerns of those being addressed. Most importantly, the concerns of those being addressed. Read this. Seek first to understand. Seek first to understand the needs of your audience, the needs of your listener, the needs of your spouse, your boyfriend, your girlfriend. Listen to their needs. Shut up. <laughs> Put your ears up. They never close. And then to be understood. Many people have the opposite. They want to be understood, but they don't understand what they're doing or why they're doing it. Next. Conformity is that jailer of freedom and the enemy of growth. Jailer of freedom. If you look and seek to be like everyone else, you might as well go to jail. That's not what we're here to do. We are here to provoke a change. And if you provoke a change, you could never do it in the context of conformity. The universe is wider than our views. We must constantly change the view. We must look at things in a way that we otherwise did not see them before. I'm asking you to first change yourself. Because if you want to change an organization, you want to change a culture, you want to change the world, where does it begin, Andrew? Right here, right there in your heart. I have to first make up my mind to change my heart. And the only way I can do that, the only way I can change my mind, is to constantly remind ourselves to view the world differently. What's the purpose of education, Andrew? Education is not the filling of a pail, but the lighting of a fire. The lighting of a fire. That's our mission. Our mission is to provoke change. If you are the 80% who just stay doing what you're doing, what changes? Nothing. Nothing. That's not what we're going to do. Remember the question that we asked before? What is a college worth? What is a college for? Taylor, what, which, what should we be asking ourselves? How are we making a difference in the lives of our students? Our mission, ladies and gentlemen, is to get everyone to think about when they write their syllabus, how am I making the difference in the lives of our students? That's our purpose. We know the great Mandiba. This guy changed the world. What can one person do? Because everybody said, I'm just one person. I can't make a difference. Yeah. We are meant to be, be contagious. contagious. Inspiration is contagious. It passes on. I hope I inspire Andrew. It inspires Samantha. It inspires
inspires Tiffany, who inspires Kristen, who inspires Taylor, who inspires Taylor, who inspires <laughs> Tossin, who gets to Matt. Oh, so here's our mission, guys. Everybody up on a chair. First of all, are you seeing the world differently? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm noticing things I didn't see before. When you leave that door, pass, pass it on. on. Thank you for your time. Did you learn something? Yeah. yeah. What are we going to do? What are we going to do when we walk out? Pass it on. Pass it on. <laughs>